Hey guys, I'm Elizabeth McCravey, a website designer and business coach for entrepreneurs and your host for the Breakthrough Brand Podcast, the show that's all about pulling back the curtain on how to actually build a successful business. I don't skim the surface around here. If you want a deep dive into the nitty gritty details of what it takes to run a successful business and stand out in a crowd, you're in the right place. After creating a multiple six figure a year website design business in my 20s, I'm ready to share everything I've learned and everything I'm still learning because I believe the keys to building a thriving business should never be a secret. Here you'll find episodes that are actionable, direct, and fun, like friends chatting business over coffee and a fresh, honest take on the reality of being an entrepreneur. If you're ready to master online marketing, branding, website design, mindset, and business strategy, then this is the podcast for you. It's time to build your breakthrough brand. Let's do this. Okay, so on episode 139, I told you all about how I planned a maternity leave from my business in anticipation of my son Colin being born. And in that episode, I laid out the nitty gritty of like all the work that went into planning it, what my team structure was going to look like, what I would would and would not be doing while I was on leave, all that stuff. And now Colin is here. And it's actually his six month birthday today as I'm recording this and my maternity leave is over. I've come back to work in my new version of what full time work looks like, which is actually not full-time hours anymore. And in this episode, though, I'm going to be sharing with you what my maternity leave looked like from a business perspective. So I'm not sharing about like the postpartum life, um, life with a new baby, that kind of stuff. I talked about that more on last week's episode. So if you want to hear all that, go back and listen to that one. It's a great like compliment to this one, you could say. But in this episode, I'm focusing on what taking a lot of time away from my business was like, what it was like working a little bit, but not a lot, because let's be real as business owners, we don't really turn off our business. So I was still working some the entire time. And then the emotional roller coaster of it all, um, how the planning actually planned out in real life, um, how much I worked, I'm going to share about what it was like doing a Black Friday sale while I was on leave. Um, and how my desires changed a little bit when becoming a mom, we'll talk about that as well. And I've got plenty of tips for you throughout if you're on a leave from your own business or planning one soon, whether it's a leave to have a baby like I did, or to get married, a vacation, or some other kind of leave entirely, um, I think you'll get some good insights here. And I also want to say before I dive into all this, I know not everyone has the ability to take a maternity leave like I'm going to be sharing about, um, especially not about a five month one, which I'll explain how it wasn't five months straight and all of the nuances of that um, in this episode. But I know not everyone can do this. And I am so, so grateful that my business allows me to take time off um, and to take time even now as I'm working still to be home with Colin while working. I think that's really awesome. And a blessing that owning an online business especially can give you. Um, but I just want to say I know not everyone can do this. I hate that. Um, I wish every maternity leave was longer than what most typical jobs are offering us, especially here in America. Um, anyway, I just want to acknowledge that privilege there and say I'm super grateful. And I hope you'll, regardless of your situation, be able to like glean some insights from what I'm sharing here about what my particular maternity leave situation was like. So that's it for the intro. Uh, Let's dive in. Okay, so to start before I get into like the maternity leave portion that was the real leave, like when Colin was actually here, and I was taking care of a newborn, I want to tell you about the before Colin was born part of my leave. So I started my maternity leave two weeks before my due date. And then Colin was not born until one week past the due date. So he was actually born three weeks later from when I started my leave. And my labor was multiple days long. If you listen to my birth story, you can scroll back some episodes to hear that one. But I talk about that. So I got induced five days past due. So basically, though, it was almost three weeks, really close to three weeks of me waiting and quote unquote chilling, um, which was not what it actually felt like. But basically three weeks of me like not really working. I had started my leave and waiting on Colin to be born. And in addition to that, I had actually started winding down work, like not having many team meetings, um, not having any meetings really or any obligations four weeks before my due date. So it was like, a lot of time of waiting, basically. And this was the intense planner in me coming out. I like to not procrastinate. I like to know when things are going to happen a little bit. I just knew that like, 
you never know when your baby's going to be born. So like it was smart in theory because due dates are truly estimates. And especially with a first baby, you don't know if they'll come early, they'll come later, what will happen. You have no idea um, and no reference point of like a past child to even give you like a little bit of a benchmark for what could be normal for you. And so I was like, I want to be prepared. Like if he does come early, I don't want to have a meeting that day or have this big project that's not completed yet. So that's why I wrapped things up so quickly. And I think I was like, I mean, you you can hear this on the episode where I talk about planning my leave. I was really excited about the idea of like a little mini pre-baby vacation because let's be real, maternity leave is not a vacation. You're getting to know a new baby you're recovering from birth, but like that part right before, I'm like, this can feel a little bit like a vacation for me. So I personally thought though, and I actually say this on the maternity leave episode, which is episode 139, I thought Colin would come late. And I actually literally, I think on that episode, I literally say that I think he'll come a week late, which is so crazy. That's what actually happened. But yeah, I wanted a nice little quote unquote vacation before he was born to finish nesting, to relax, to prepare for birth, to sleep more, basically a break before I was in baby land. And so that's what I thought two weeks before the due date would be for me. And on that episode, um, I actually haven't re-listened to it, but I did look over my outline of it. And I talk about all my beautiful, glorious, and somewhat precious plans. Now looking back, I talk about like reading more, napping, hanging out with friends, doing yoga. All of it sounds so peaceful and perfect. And in reality, what actually happened is that I was so eager for Colin to be born that relaxing felt impossible. And I hate that for myself, but that's the truth. And they might be different for you. Um, Everyone has such a different personality type when it comes to stuff like this. But for me, I started stressing about trying not to go past my due date because at some point in that um, three week period, I had to go ahead and schedule an induction, which I ended up getting induced before that induction date. But I like had this date on the calendar that my birth center was like, if you don't go into labor before then, you're going to have to be induced to the hospital, which again, I ended up being induced anyway. But that kind of put some pressure on me of like, okay, I got to get this baby out. And I was pretty uncomfortable. I'm towards the end of pregnancy. You get you get a lot bigger. I gained a lot of weight in the very like last weeks, it felt like after kind of plateauing on weight gain. And so I was really uncomfortable. I didn't feel very social and I was also super emotional. Like I cried a lot. It was just a lot of like these last final days. I was nervous. Um, I was excited. I was so ready to meet Colin. It was so many emotions. And so it was not a cute little vacation like I thought it would be. So on my list of things I had said I would do um, and I was excited to do, I want to kind of read that to you and tell you what actually happened. So I said um, on that episode, I want to read a fun fiction novel, which actually did happen. I did do a lot of reading. I finished up one book and I read another and maybe even like one additional one. I can't remember. It might have been like three books. I did a lot of reading. But one of the books I read was called The One. And I was like really excited about it at first. I think I actually shared about it on Instagram when I first started because I was super into it. It's kind of like a soap opery, futuristic book. Loved it at first. Couldn't put it down. And by the end of it, I literally hated it. And without giving away any spoilers, let's just say it's not a good book to read when you are a new mom or about to give birth. Some of the twists at the end, I was like, this is not good for me right now to be thinking and reading about. Um, So that was kind of like my fun fiction novel kind of turned into like, ooh, that's like a horror story for me as a becoming a new mom. Um, I also talked about how I wanted to take more of a course I had purchased, which was Nancy Ray's an integrated life course, which I absolutely love. But in these final weeks, I did not even touch the course. Once I kind of got done working on my own business, I felt like I had no motivation to do extra learning um, about anything other than like having a new baby. Like I, anything I want, any focus I had energy wise for learning was on like how to go into labor and like how to care for Colin when he got here. I talked about having extra time in prayer each day, writing and journaling and praying over my birth experience and over Colin. And I did do a lot of that, which I'm really grateful for. I had a lot of pretty quiet mornings um, where I did get to prayer, write and journal and all that kind of stuff. I also, um, in the final days, I made an entire album, like um, like a digital one on Shutterfly with my whole pregnancy, like upload all the photos, arranged it all, got it printed, everything in those last weeks. So that was a fun little project. I talked about how I wanted to finish up the nursery, which yes, I did that. Me and Adam finished it up. And that's the thing. It's like finishing up the nursery took like literally one day. So I did not need a two week leave um, early to do that. 
Oh, I talked about meal prepping with my mother-in-law, which we did do this. It was so, so very much fun. I actually kicked off my maternity leave with my mother-in-law, Jan, coming to visit. So like the first two days of my official leave, that Monday and Tuesday, she actually she didn't think she was there three days, but those early days she was there. And we spent like two days making freezer meals in the kitchen together. I had a whole list of like printed recipes. Like these are all the ones we're going to make. We had mostly dinners and then some breakfast stuff as well. And she really loves cooking. I really love cooking. And so it was fun kind of being in the kitchen together. And as you can imagine, at the end of pregnancy, your feet get really tired for standing too long. So it was nice having someone's help because a lot of that time looked like her working in the kitchen and me sitting down and kind of like taking a lot of breaks. And then the two of us did a tea time together at Thistle Farms, which I absolutely love that place in Nashville. And that was a fun thing that I'd looked forward to like doing kind of to kick off my leave was um, she and I going to Thistle Farms and doing the freezer meals and all that. So that was two weeks before my due date. So I didn't have more to do there, right? Like I started off my leave doing that and then that was done. I talked about hanging out with girlfriends more and getting one-on-one time in with friends. And I weirdly, which maybe not so weird, I think this is probably more normal than I think, but I became super homebody-ish quickly into those two weeks. Like I didn't want to hang out with people. I was pretty moody. I was easily frustrated. I was easily frustrated by text being like, have you gone to labor yet? How dilated are you? I'm like, can y'all not ask me that? Um, and I was pretty moody. I did do some hanging out with friends though, but I mostly found myself wanting to stay home and just wait on Colin to be born and like, just not very social. I kind of like, I think in that first week, I was the most like antisocial. And then in the second week, I was like, okay, I've got to like do some stuff. I got to get out of the house. Like, cause just sitting around waiting is not good for me. Um, I talked about wanting to walk more and do some yoga. And for me doing yoga looked like YouTube videos, um, that were supposed to cause you to go into labor. And I was like, cool, this like labor inducing yoga workout. Um, none of it worked for me. Clearly I ended up being induced. And I also said I wanted to nap more which I did not even nap once that whole time. I don't nap easily in general. So I didn't really nap much. I probably did sleep a little more, definitely more than you do when you have a newborn. Um, And I did do a lot of walking. I would go to the gym and walk um, pretty frequently. So anyway, you get the picture though. I did do some of what was on my list, but it was all done so quickly that I quickly became antsy of like, okay, cool. The nursery's ready. The meals are prepped. The hospital bag is packed what do I do now? In those final days, I binge watched the show White Lotus. Um, really loved that show while bouncing on a yoga ball. I literally watched the whole show bouncing on a yoga ball um, and laying on the couch intermixed, trying to get Colin out. Um, Adam and I went to the pool almost every day um, when I was really close to being due, which was fun. I really enjoyed like swimming while well, super pregnant is fun because you can, it's, it's just interesting. Like, I don't know. I thought that was really fun. And I tried to do some stuff again there to like induce labor a little bit. Interrupting this episode with a suggestion for the small business owners listening. Ever wonder what you should do for healthcare when you and your spouse are both self-employed so there's no work provided health insurance to participate in? Well, when my husband Adam joined me in the entrepreneurial job space over four years ago, we joined Christian Healthcare Ministries instead of getting traditional health insurance. And it was the best decision for us, especially in these years of growing and raising a family while also running multiple businesses. CHM is a health cost sharing ministry and is a faith-based alternative to health insurance. We did tons of research before choosing CHM. And if you know me and Adam, you know, we are all about doing the math when making big or small financial decisions. And even though it's not insurance, CHM shares 100% of eligible medical bills, which is more than the typical 70 or 80% of medical bills paid for by insurance companies. All sharing is determined by the CHM guidelines, which you can check out before and after joining. And for the mamas and mamas to be listening, you truly cannot find a better healthcare option for maternity care. I had a vaginal delivery and a C-section and birth center care and hospital care between my two pregnancies and births, and it was all 100% shared for. And outside of birth, we've had our share of emergency room visits and procedures as a family, and those costs were all shared by members at Christian Healthcare Ministries, leaving us only paying our monthly contribution. CHM is less expensive month-to-month than insurance, and because there's no network, you can choose your care with whichever providers best fit your family. I seriously just cannot recommend Christian Healthcare Ministries enough. You've got to check them out. Go to elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM for more information. Also putting that link in the show notes, Elizabeth with McCravey.com slash CHM. Now back to the episode. And last things on the like 
pre Colin being here part of my leave. But on my actual due date, I was so antsy. Um, I was getting bored. I was like, could not focus on anything and I was not really enjoying myself. And I decided that I actually did need to work. Um, because again, I was getting bored. I had a lot of business ideas floating in my mind. So I went to a coffee shop for about a half day of work and I did some various things, one of them being writing a blog post um, about Show It and my templates. It's a really great blog. I will link to it for you to read if you'd like. Um, it's kind of funny to think now, I, as you read it, remember, I'm sitting in a coffee shop, like, please get this baby out. Um, and on my due date, wrote this post for you. So that's fun. Um, and that was a good day for me. Like, it was good on my due date to, like, not think about the fact that it was there and just kind of work on other things. Uh, I also got a massage in those final days, which was really fun. I had not had a massage in forever. I went to the chiropractor two different times, but again, mostly I was just bored and waiting. And basically the beginning of my leave um, was so much eager anticipation. I felt like my energy and like my soul feelings being truly in that like in between of waiting. And I did not handle that great. I was a big ball of nervous energy and the planner in me of like the get stuff done ahead of time, because I really don't like procrastinating, led me to having nothing to do. And I actually listened to in those final days, an episode of the Pregnancy and Birth Made Easy podcast by My Essential Birth. I absolutely love that podcast. Um, and it was so helpful to me throughout my pregnancy. Um, Stephanie, you're actually going to hear her on this podcast um, coming up soon. Not sure when that episode will air, but um, on a compilation episode. So anyway, stay tuned for that. But anyway, I was listening to an episode that was really fun about like in those final weeks when you're waiting or your past your due date, like what to do with your time. And they were very much expressing like, okay, like you're, you're anticipating, you're eager, how to like pass the time. And they had all these great tips for things to do. And I'm like, yes, that's so smart. Already did it. So smart. Already did it. Um, I've literally done everything um, that they had mentioned. So anyway, I, I was out of things to do. So eventually though, on August 31st, I had to get induced, which I share that whole story on the birth story episode of the podcast. I'll link to it in the show notes. And then on September 2nd, in that afternoon, Colin arrived and we stayed at the hospital for a few days after, which I also talk about how amazing that experience was and how blessed I feel to have had all the nurses and midwives like loving us and caring for us in those first days. It was super helpful. And then Adam and I went home on that Sunday um, with Colin and it was like, wow, we were, we got a baby, we're taking him home. And so that's when the leave really starts from the like perspective of taking care of a baby. So now let's talk about the length of my leave and the plan of it versus reality. So first of all, my plan maternity leave was two and a half months. If you listen to my episode about planning my leave, I literally say this, I say on it that it'll be two and a half months. That's literally in the title of the episode. But it ended up being more like five months, but not five months fully off. Five months of some work, like between five to 10 hours a week, but mostly time with Colin. It was like working when I can, working during nap time, um, working while Adam's taking care of him some and not really working after he went to sleep because I was basically going to sleep every time he was asleep, but basically like working on stuff as I could fit it in, but not the whole time. So it was like two and a half months of like true leave and then kind of dipping back into work a little bit, then going back into more. Leave. It was very like, there's a lot of flow to it, not as much like strict structure. So the day that Adam and I actually declared as like my first day back to work where we had a schedule, um, I was going to be shutting myself in the office for more hours of the day, really tracking my time, diving back into my inbox. All of that was on January 17th, which was when Colin was four and a half months old. And when I had been out of office ish for 22 weeks, um, which that translates to about five and a half months. So that's where I'm getting saying in this episode, that's like my five ish month maternity leave. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm getting really specific on that because I want you to be able to understand all the numbers of it if you are curious. And again, I want to say I feel so privileged to have been able to take this much time off. And I know it's not the norm. I'm so grateful. Seriously, so grateful. Every day I'm like, I'm so grateful I get to be home with Colin right now. I seriously adore him and like love being able to like right now I'm recording this episode and he's napping in the next room. And I love that especially thinking about those early days being with Colin without much other obligations. Um, and also having Adam home with us most of the time was really incredible. 
And I know that again, it's not like the norm and I'm grateful for it. And when I think though about like how I was able to do this long of a leave in my business, if you're thinking like, I want to build a business where I could do that. Um, these are like the three things that come to mind for me of like how I was able to take almost like a half year off basically. So one would be the type of business I built because I sell digital products primarily. Um, my templates and my course booked out designer are like the main things I'm selling and booked out designer actually wasn't for sale during my leave at all. So my template shop and affiliate income is what kept my business afloat. And I actually had really great months of business the whole time I was on leave. Some of them, yes, were a lower than they would have been, but I did not have any months where it was like, oh my gosh, this is so like scary and horrible. If I was only working, I did not have that. Um, again, because that's the nature of like a digital product business. They can keep selling um, even when you're not working, which is awesome. And if you're someone primarily doing one-on-one work, it's hard to do that much time off without saving um, money ahead of time in your business or planning um, different things with clients so that they understand you're gone. Like, again, it's totally doable. I 100% think it is doable with a service business um, and with services as your primary offering, but it does change things. And so that's one element is digital products. Second element, I have a team. So stuff like customer support, podcast episodes going up, overall business maintenance was still happening without me having to be the person doing it. So that is huge here. I don't actually think that's like even more essential than the digital product business model um, is having people who are there to help you because you can't just completely leave your business abandoned for that long and expect it to be okay. Um, And then the third way is that I did do some work. So this was not five and a half months of unattentiveness to my business. I was dialed in enough, but not all the way. And I do think if I'd like completely zoned out that I was like, no one contact me, my team don't contact me, figure it out on your own. I'm not going to post, I'm not going to record podcasts ever. Nothing's going to go out content wise, no emails are going out. I had said all that. I do not think it would have been good. I do think my business would have suffered long term had I done that model. And the truth is, I don't want that model, right? I love my business. I love working. And so I enjoyed being able to still create some content and like prepping content to go out while I was gone. So those are three things, though, that I think allowed um, it to all work the way it did. And I'm going to get into as we keep talking why I did a longer leave, how I kept things going during leave. I'm going to talk about that during this episode plenty, but I want to go kind of in order of as things happen. But I did want to explain that of like my leave ended up looking different and how it was able to be as long as it was. Okay, so now I want to talk about those early days from, again, a work perspective of when Colin was like right when he was born. So I did what every new mom does, business owner or not. And a few days later, I think in our case, it was the next day I posted on social media his birth announcement with some photos from the hospital, a few stories on Instagram about what was going on. I also posted to my Facebook, personal Facebook for like the first time in forever. And I was, of course, over the moon to share the news with all of you guys that he was here. And in those first weeks in days, here's the thing I think a lot of business owners end up doing totally okay if you don't. I'm not saying this is actually a good thing, but it's just kind of interesting because I've noticed it with other business owners as well. But in those first few weeks and days, I was posting more on social media about the new mom life. Um, Again, see this a lot. And I was posting more because I'm like, I'm so excited. I'm running on adrenaline. Um, I'm taking like a thousand pictures a day, which let's be honest, I still take like a thousand pictures a call in a day. But I was like ready to share. Um, I was also used to sharing um, because I had been sharing pretty consistently, you know, on Instagram leading up to Colin being born. So I wasn't like in like, let's take a break mode. And then I kind of slowly started easing into posting less, taking more of a break, kind of easing out of work more slowly. And in those early days, I had a lot of friends saying to me, wow, like I'm shocked you're working so much when you just had a baby because I was posting about new podcast episodes. I was posting pre-planned social media content content, like posts I'd already written going out to my feed, Instagram stories that were um, scheduled for me to like publish and plannily. Um, I even posted a collab I did with Pink Blush Maternity during the first week or so that Colin was born where they had sent me a product. I literally had to like take the photos with it and then post it all like right there. I think that was like the week Colin was born. And hilariously though, This is, again, it's so funny to me because now looking back, I'm like, I cannot imagine this version of myself. I truly was just running on adrenaline. But literally the day after we got home from the hospital, I did an impromptu Labor Day sale on my templates. Um, So again, I was just running on pure adrenaline that eventually wore off because I was like not sleeping and learning so much new stuff and just 
all the things, but I was so excited. And um, again, still kind of like not dialed out of work yet. But I thought a Labor Day sale when I had just been in labor would be super cute. Um, I know Labor Day does not actually have to do with giving birth, but I thought it was a cute like punny thing, right? And I'd actually thought about planning it like before he was born, like in those final weeks of work, I was like, huh, if Colin's born around when I think he'll be born, which was a week late, then he'll be born around Labor Day. Wouldn't a Labor Day sale be cute? Even if he came earlier, wouldn't a Labor Day sale be cute when I just had a baby, right? So I had been thinking about all that. Um, and I should have done if I was going to do it, like done the work ahead of time, but I didn't. I was like, oh, I probably won't feel like doing all that. I'm not going to do it. Um, so I thought about planning it, but then I didn't. But then once we got home that next day on Sunday, and so it's Labor Day weekend, right? Labor Day was that Monday. And this is the day before I literally said to Adam and my mom, who was there to meet Colin that day, I was like, it's gonna sound crazy. But I want to do a Labor Day sale, give me like one hour, I'm going to go into my office, I'm going to make the sale happen, like just throw like write the email, get it all ready. And my mom was there at that point, like I said, to meet Colin. So she was also helping Adam a little bit. And so I stepped into my office and 45 minutes later, I came out and a Labor Day sale was active. I wrote an email for the sale where I said some punny things and I announced Colin's birth. I told the info about the template sale, made some jokes about Labor Day and labor. Um, I made a coupon code, made a little graphic, sent the email off. And then I messaged my team and said, hi, like I know I'm on leave, but we're doing a Labor Day sale. Here's the info about it. I know this is random. Like, here you go. And we did a lot of great sales that weekend, which was really fun. And I'm going to gonna like actually open the email right now and read part of it because I think it's kind of fun and a, a cute memory. But I say writing you a fast email with my three day old baby sitting next to me and definitely some spit up in my hair. That was true for when I was writing this. And I said, yep, I'm officially a mom proof here. Yesterday, we brought Colin home. I told my husband I should do an impromptu Labor Day sale to celebrate. I went through labor and it's Labor Day too good to not do something for. So right now and then I tell the the coupon deal and all that. And then I say I know website templates have nothing to do with birth or what the Labor Day holiday is about. But I know how a great website can transform a business. And I hope this sale helps you do that. And then I kind of transition. And I say, enjoy the sale while I enjoy the baby snuggles, you know, all that. So it was really fun. It was a fun like twist on like a email birth announcement, I think like fun to do a sale, um, as I announced Colin to the world. So that was me, though, in the first few days, um, I was like, kind of working still, I was posting a decent amount still on Instagram, I was definitely tuned into my inbox less than I ended up being as the leave went on. We actually had one of our booked out designer coaching calls with Becky when the mindset calls happened while I was in labor. So I was like tuned out plenty to stuff, but like also tuned in in a sense on the sharing front. And then I pretty quickly went into not working much. I zoned out of posting on Instagram most of the time. I was not in my inbox as much. The lack of sleep and all the learning involved in becoming a new parent had me able and ready to disconnect from work. And I also was just, and still am, oh my gosh, so obsessed with Colin that I did not like want to do anything else. It was like, that's all I wanted to focus on was caring for him, getting to know him. So again, like in the first days I'm like, oh, I'm running adrenaline, ready to keep working. And then I was able to zone out. And again, I feel like I see this a lot with new moms where I'm first like, wow, they're posting so much. And then they kind of like zone out and get into like really um, getting into their maternity leave. It just kind of sometimes takes a little while. Okay, so now I want to talk about what my leave looked like after Colin was born day in and day out what I was and wasn't doing. Um, and some of what like I thought I would be doing, but actually what, what I wouldn't be doing, but actually was and vice versa. So I visualized and again, you will hear me say it's in episode 139. I visualized my leave looking like being completely unplugged from my inbox, which was not actually what happened. And I'm glad I planned for that vision, right? Like I'm glad I had set up my business in such a way that I could step away from my inbox. But here's why that wasn't what actually happened. So the first reason is that I was using my same personal email address for all the new mom newsletters I was signing up for, for the doctor appointment reminders, the lactation consultant bills, coupon codes I was signing up to get to buy baby stuff, our meal train, all the reminders when people signed up to bring meals were all getting sent to that email address. So basically, I had a personal reason every single day, multiple times a day sometimes to be opening my inbox. 
Um, plus, every time I made a template sale, I wanted to see it. So like I get text message reminders when I make a sale, highly recommend doing that. You can use Zapier, however you say it, um, to set that up. Um, if you are like a, a shop owner of sorts, I think it's really fun to get um, text about that. But whenever I get the text, I always want to go and look and be like, okay, who bought? Like, what's their business? I like to kind of look. So I was going in to do that. And then we also bought a house in November, which I'll talk a little bit about in this episode, I guess. But like, that was a huge thing, a huge decision, a lot of work when that was all happening, like that whole process. Um, so I was doing a lot of emailing for that. And then we also, during that time, we got our old house set up to be our next rental property. Um, so a lot of emailing for that of like getting the listing ready. Um, Adam and I both like communicating with realtors and stuff about all that together. Um, so basically some real estate business stuff, which neither of us were on leave from. Adam did a lot of work on our real estate business in these early months since Colin's been born. And so for all of that I could have used my personal non business email address for that stuff. That would be a suggestion if you're like, Oh, I don't want to have to go into my work inbox at all use a different email from all those kind of things I just talked about. But my personal email is literally a train wreck with like 50,000 unread emails because I never check it. So I use my like private business email address, which Stacy also has access to and checks. So she was like, taking the stuff out of the inbox that was like very business related that she could respond to. But then leaving all the stuff that was like, you know, the kite baby coupon code and the meal train reminders and this lactation invoice and all that kind of stuff. Um, I was also on my phone a lot while breastfeeding. Those early days, you're breastfeeding your baby for like 30 plus minutes every single time. I know there were days where I was spending anywhere from like five to six and a half, seven hours breastfeeding, like over, over the course of 24 hours. Like it's a lot of time. It's an all day thing. And so it was easy for me to check my inbox on my phone. And I think to me being in my inbox made me feel like I had a good pulse in my business. So I might would open an email and know that like Stacy's going to take care of this one. But I kind of like to know what's going on. Um, so basically, though, I was not unplugged from my inbox, which was not the plan, not what um, we had all talked about beforehand. But I think that was fine that that's how it ended up working out. And I will say too, even though I was in my inbox a lot on my phone, I do not get any sort of push notifications for any apps, really not for Instagram, not for my inbox or anything like that. So I was not getting like, push notifications that so and so customer has this question, I was just going in there as I wanted to see. And I did have an autoresponder up on my personal email saying I was out of office, um, that would go out to basically anyone who emailed me. And I think that was good, because it helped me like know that like when someone was emailing me about work, and they were hoping to get me right then I don't have to like respond right now, they know that someone else is going to respond, they got the autoresponder. So cannot recommend the autoresponder enough, regardless of your situation with your lead like it was really helpful. And I honestly like didn't even want to turn it off when I came back to work. I was kind of like, maybe I'll just leave this on and edit it a little bit. Because I like to have an autoresponder kind of saying like, it's like, I'm not going to respond immediately and that kind of stuff. Okay, another thing with communication. So we had a whole protocol for getting in touch with me with any questions and like urgent, both urgent stuff and then the kind of stuff that can wait. And on our team, again, in this in this whole span of like five months, again, with me working some plenty during it, especially around Black Friday, but there were very few, if any, urgent things. Um, so most things I was needed for just got added to a list in our project manager for me to look at later. Um, Stacy would like write about what it was, add a link to the conversation if it was email related and like put it in a section of like, this is stuff to look at later, or this is stuff that's warrant to look at quickly, all that kind of stuff. It was really well sorted. She did an awesome job with that. And I think there was only one time over the whole leave where Stacy Foxered me about something that was like, not urgent, but more of like, this is something like I need help with now. And like, we've are me and Abby have talked about it. And we don't know the answer to this. It was like a customer billing question. And it was just one time. And I also actually did not know the answer to it. So it was kind of like, okay, we actually all just have to like figure out what to do here. Um, but Stacy and Abby handled everything beautifully without me. And actually, at the end of this episode, I'm going to come back and tell you guys, I have it saved at the end of my notes, but like their review of the maternity leave and what they said could have been done better. And then what they said worked really well for them. Cause I want you guys to be able to hear that insight too, as you think about episode 139, where I shared everything I was going to do. Okay. So then in addition to all that, um, so you kind of hear what communication was like. I also didn't have any work meetings for the entire first month of Colin's life, which was good because that times the fog and I was really like 
not truly unplugged then. All my podcast content was pre-batched. I posted on social media as I felt like it or was posting scheduled content to like say there was a new episode out or reposting someone tagging me and something that sort of thing. I was not good at replying to DMs um, and that's okay. I slept when I could and I tried to put work out of my mind. Again, it was really, I feel like I was truly unplugged for like close to like the first two months, like really, truly unplugged from work. But again, still in my inbox a little bit because again, as business owners, we don't just like completely shut off work, um, which is okay. Um, I would much trade having work on my mind often, but still get to be home with my baby um, instead of having to go to an office. So yeah, so that's kind of what all that looked like. And now I want to talk about the emotions of balancing work while on maternity leave, but while also working a little bit, like I've been saying, and managing new motherhood. So a few different times, um, if you might be generous, it might be easier to say more like 30 or 40 times, like many times I got stressed about work while I was on leave. Um, I got overwhelmed at the idea of going back to work. I got overwhelmed feeling like I cannot do motherhood and my business together. That was too much. It was too much to switch back and forth mentally between the two. I felt like I just wanted to be with Colin a little bit and did not want to work at all. I also, on the opposite end of all that, had moments where I was like, I'm getting so behind um, while I am not working or like I'm not going to be able to work enough to like catch up and like I'm just my business is going to get behind because I've had a baby. Um, again, just total honest thoughts. I had a mix of all of that. Um, and there were moments when I was getting stressed about work where I had to remind myself and this was such a good reminder and I hope someone listening that this will be a good reminder for you as well if you're in those early postpartum days or even later um, into your new motherhood journey. I had to remind myself that my only responsibility was taking care of Colin. Um, I had prepared a maternity leave. I did a really good job getting it all ready. And I need to block out work and get used to being a mom, take care of my baby, take care of myself, get to know this precious new human that I was so in love with. And that was a good reminder. Like I remember one particular night feed where I was up in the middle of the night, um, took me a real, I had a, I had a really intense problem during night feeds, which we just recently, um, like maybe a month ago, quit feeding all through the night. But I would have a problem where usually at like the second or third night feed, I could not fall back asleep because my mind would kind of start racing about all the different things I was thinking about while I was up feeding Colin. But there was one night feed in those early days where my mind was racing, could not go back to sleep. And I was just thinking about work stuff and kind of stressing. I was like, how am I going to do it all was kind of my thought. And then I had to remind myself of all this, like Colin's my, my responsibility right now. And that's it. I don't have to focus on anything else. Um, and that was such a beautiful like reminder of like, this is all I'm supposed to be doing right now um, and put the other stuff aside. And so when I had some of those moments, I had to be even more conscious of like not reading the emails in the inbox, not being on social media as much and that sort of stuff. And I think that was helpful in those moments. But as women, like guys, we are so often used to wearing a lot of hats, a lot of multitasking, whether you're a mom or not. And so in those early months, though, the only hat I felt myself wanting to wear was my mom hat. Um, but then I felt a lot of pressure of like, I got to wear the business hat too, or else my business isn't going to do well, or else I won't like can't do it all long term. And it was just really stressful in some ways. I hope everything I'm saying makes sense to you all. And I will say it did get easier. It got so much easier. Those early days are really, really hard. So if you are in them now, know that like, it's really hard. It does get easier. And as I'm recording this right now, it's way easier than it was back then. But in all honesty, I had many moments, emotional moments of like, I cannot do both. I'm behind. I'm too tired to do both things well. And that left me being like, I'm not sure if I want to like do my business, which is so crazy. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. But I had moments of that because I'm like, I just want to be with my baby. And the truth is, I wasn't ready to like go back to working at all yet. And I think that's why I felt those things so emotionally. So example story, I actually typed this note in my phone about this, um, right when it happened. So this is like, not me looking back on it, but more so like what I felt actually in that moment. And I wrote about it in a, in a note in my phone. Um, but to kind of tell what happened. So there was a podcast I recorded for Black Friday. So this was like about two months into my leave, I guess. And it was like the first time I was really like dipping my feedback into work by recording an episode that we were going to air during Black Friday. I was really excited to record it. My mother-in-law was there helping us to give me some time to work on stuff for the Black Friday sale. 
And I had outlined this episode in my phone while breastfeeding. No joke. I wrote the entire outline in the notes app on my phone. Again, that was when I was breastfeeding like five hours a day. So I had the time I was just with while Collins eating. I was just typing away, did the outline, and then I went to record it. And I finished recording it and I was so tired. Like, I mean, those, again, those early days, you're up every few hours during the night. Um, and as soon as I got done recording, Colin was waking up from a nap, crying, ready to eat again. So I fed him right before, recorded this episode. He wakes up immediately, ready to feed again. And I just got hit with like, I am so drained. I cannot do this. Um, I cannot do both these things. And I felt torn between the two and tired, like so tired and honestly too tired to be working. Like I wish I could tell myself then like, just don't record the podcast. Just don't air anything that week. Which in reality, like again, that's what kind of I'm saying here. I wasn't ready to dive back into work yet. That was at about a month and a half after Colin had been born. And that was not me diving fully back into work, but more like I got to kind of start working on a little bit of stuff for Black Friday. So that might have been the only work thing I did in like a few days period, but I was not ready for it. And after recording that episode, I fed Colin and then I cried to Adam and saying, I cannot do both. I was just so upset. I was drained. And all of that from just simply recording an episode of this podcast, which I absolutely love. And it's one of the favorite, my favorite things I do in my business. And you would not be able to tell in that episode, I can't even remember which one it was, but you would not be able to tell that that whole upset situation happened or that I outlined it while breastfeeding. But it, the truth was, I was not ready to die back into work and... I was feeling that big struggle of like wearing a lot of hats and like as the first time really trying to wearing the business hat and the motherhood hat and it was hard. And so here's here's kind of why I said I could do a whole episode on this. Um, and I'm already at like 38 minutes of talking with you guys here. So I don't want to talk about this too long because I have other things I want to discuss. But my dude, I'm doing this on some, a whole episode in this sometime. Let me know if you'd like to hear that. But I started struggling with wanting to be a stay at home mom and quote unquote dreaming about wanting to quit my business, which sounds so crazy to say, but I can't believe I would like even sharing this on the show because I feel like, again, I can't explain the full context on this episode. So even as I say that, I'm not giving like the full picture of the whole story there. Again, why I think it could warrant like a whole nother conversation. But to give give a little reference for all that. So I don't think there's anything wrong with being a stay-at-home mom whatsoever. A lot of my friends are. My mom and Adam's mom were both stayed at home with us when we were in our little years. And Adam and I both grew up in like more traditional households where like the dad worked and the mom did baby stuff. Um, so I don't think there's anything wrong with being a stay-at-home mom. I think it's awesome. And again, I'm saying like I kind of started to feel that pull. But before Colin was born... I never desired to be a stay at home mom. I always like in thinking about knowing I wanted to be a mother, I would say I could never do that. I love work too much. Like I can't imagine being a stay at home mom, basically. And as I say all this too, it's worth noting, like some of that pull is also like, I know being a stay at home mom would be really, really hard. Um, like, gosh, even the, the times I've had glimpses of that so far, cause like when I record an episode later about like what coming back from leave has been like, I have full days now where I am in like a stay at home mom mode. And it's just like a singular day where I'm with Colin all day, um, without any help from Adam or anyone else. And it's like, yeah, being a stay at home mom would be really hard. So anyway, I felt that pull though, because I just love Colin so much and love being with him, which I think um, most moms can relate to. But basically, every time Adam and I had conversations where it's like, okay, so maybe you do desire to like not work at all. Like, what what does that look like? How could we like work towards that eventually? Because right now I am like the breadwinner for our family. So that's not even an option for us if I actually legitimately wanted to do that. Um, so we would have conversations about that. And it's so funny because every time we had these conversations, like literally every single time, I would end up coming up with a new business idea and get so excited about my business that I couldn't stop talking about it. I would start goal setting of like, I have this idea and that idea and I want to help women do this because like, there's a hole here. We need to have someone teaching this sort of thing. I and mean, I would get all these new ideas. Um, and then I would realize, wait, I can love both. I can do both. There's room for me to be a good mom and be a good business owner. And there's a room for me to love both. And not only that, but I want to build a business that allows me to do both well. And I want to help other business owners do the same. So basically, every time I had these moments, it ended with like, wait, I love my business too. Um, And I just was not ready to come back to work yet. And that's why I think I was feeling that pull because in those early days, you really are just like, you need to be close to your baby and want to be close to your baby. So every time I felt that way, though, it motivated me to help other women who feel this way. Um, it gave me ideas to create things for you guys on these topics and get bring more guests on the podcast about these topics. I love this stuff. And it also kind of brought me back to how much I love teaching 
And I love helping people build awesome businesses that can support their families and their lifestyle and all of that. And one of the course ideas I'm actually working on right now, I'm in the very early stages of it, but I'm working on is how to create a successful business with digital products. So I would not be using the word passive because I kind of hate that word. I don't think it's totally accurate, but how to build a scalable business model with selling courses, templates, digital downloads, whatever it is for you, but at scale. And I feel like I figured out how to do that well in my own business. So I feel really excited about like the idea of helping other people how to do that figure out how to do that too. So that's something that's coming. And that's something that like basically every time I start thinking about all this stuff, I like got more motivated on these different ideas I have. And um, anyway, though, to kind of bring it back full circle to like some good advice I got um, during this time. One of the times that was kind of having my freak out moment of like, I cannot do both. Um, again, it's happening multiple times. I ended up um, messaging Madison Brown, who's my sweet friend and bookkeeper. She has been on the podcast before. If you want to go back and listen to that episode, I sent her a boxer just about all my emotions because I knew she would be able to understand and offer some good insight. And she sent me the sweetest message. But one thing she said, like as she started, like her advice to me was whatever you thought you wanted before Colin was born, let it go. And I thought that was so, so good advice, much needed. I want to say that to any mom listening, like whatever you thought you wanted before your baby was born, let it go. Um, because you don't know what you'll actually feel until you meet your baby. Um, and that's where like, because I was kind of struggling with like, wait, I never thought I'd want this. But now I'm feeling this desire, like maybe I should lean into that. Maybe I should explore that, which was good for me to explore. Um, and just good to know, like, you don't know what it's gonna be like until your baby's here. And so it's hard to like, predicting you might think you want one thing, but you'll want another. And for me, I'm like, I just love Colin so much. Being with him is fun. I just adore him as parents do their children. And that love motivates me in my business in some ways because I'm building a life for our family. And I love the idea that Colin's going to grow up seeing his mom run a business too, which I think is cool. And anyway, I I just think it's good though to throw out what you thought you might want um, and revisit it. So I've done a lot of journaling, a lot of conversations with Adam and friends about like navigating this of like, um, what does it look like to do both? What does it look like to scale back work some so that I can do motherhood stuff more, which is what I have been doing. And that's been really good for me. So we'll talk about that another time. But um, I needed the kind of the point and all that I needed the five ish months leave personally to feel all the way ready to go all the way back to work. Um, and I love how I was able to start working more gradually. I do think some of it happened a little earlier than maybe I would have hoped for because of Black Friday, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, but it was nice going back more gradually. And I know not all women can do that. In most cases, coming back from maternity leave is like zero to 100. And you're like home with your baby all day. And now you're in an office working an eight to five or nine to five. Um, but if you are in a work position where you can dive in a little more gradually, I'd highly recommend it. So doing more of like, if you're able to work from home a little bit during naps or like you're able to go into the office for just two hours one day, like taking it slower. Um, if your workplace or your business allows for that, highly recommend it. it it's much it's much more pleasant going into like a slow flow of back to work. Okay, so I have two more major things to talk about. And then we're going to wrap this thing up again. This is not this is probably not everything I could say about my maternity leave. But I'm I'm hoping this is helpful and insightful to you in some way. And I'm hitting some of the kind of the high points as I look back on the past five months. Um, So I want to talk about Black Friday. So Colin was born, like we said, September 2nd. Black Friday happens at the end of November. And um, I do a Black Friday sale every year. And this year, last year, rather, um, I did a very minimal but successful um, sale, like very minimally executed. We did not do a ton of bells and whistles from a marketing perspective. And um, that worked out really well. So leading up to the sale, though, I was working more. Um, So that's why I decided to continue my maternity leave basically after the sale was over. Because I like didn't really get the full leave I was hoping for because I realized I have to play for Black Friday. And here's here's the thing. In all honesty, I probably should have. And Abby, actually, when I share like team member feedback from my leave in a moment, that was one thing Abby said was that she wished that we would have planned at least some of the Black Friday sale before I went out on my leave 
because we did not plan any of it, um, which I, again, probably should have done that. For me, it was like in August when I was like, you know, starting my leave, it was really hard for me to like think that far ahead to Black Friday. And so I like didn't want to work on it yet, basically. Again, probably should have, but I didn't want to work on it. And I had so much other stuff I was prepping, like social media content, emails, podcast episodes, all of that, that I felt like my hands were full with all those items to prep that adding in Black Friday would have just been too much. So I was like, I'm just going to do a minimal the executed sale um, on maternity leave. So here's kind of what that looked like. On October 13th, I had my first meeting. That was the first meeting since Colin had been born and it was with Abby and we had one meeting to plan on our Black Friday sale. That is the only time we met um, for the wholesale planning, which was really nice. We did, Again, I was not like planning Black Friday was not like a huge thing for me. We were able to do it pretty minimally. And then the next week, I had one meeting with my copywriter, Emily. And those are the only two meetings I had for Black Friday. All other communication for playing the sale was done over Fox or email or project management system, all that kind of stuff. And it was awesome. And we executed a really great sale um, without me having to do a lot of additional work to make it happen, which again, really grateful for the business I have that that's, that's something I'm even able to say. Um, and so after the sale was over, I wanted to go back into maternity leave mode for a bit. And so what that looked like was I recorded some podcasts here and there. I did some stuff for Booked Out Designer, but I mostly went back into maternity leave mode. And that was really great because we bought a house in November. So like even before Black Friday happened, we bought a house um, and closed on it. And then we moved in January. So with all the packing and all the planning for that, I really could use some time not working. Like besides the fact of having just had a baby, um, that was kind of a stressful time to be honest, like um, between buying the house, packing up all of our things during Colin's naps, and then moving and like figuring out setting up this house, which we're still not very set up yet. But basically for me, all of December and then up until halfway through January, I went back to like truly on leave mode with not really much working. I think I recorded a few podcast interviews, um, but bes- not interviews, few podcast episodes, few solo episodes, but it was mostly out of office. And that was really good and much needed for me. And during that time, Colin was going through the um, three to four month sleep regression, leap four, if you follow Wonder Week. So I was like, not sleeping much at all. That was like the worst sleep experience we've had at night with Colin. So it would have been so hard waking up every day and having to start work after having been up practically the whole night every night feeding Colin because of this sleep regression. So when I think about the context of all that, like that was happening with sleep and naps being really hard, it's like, yeah, I needed to not be working because it was kind of like all hands on deck for us taking care of Colin. And something else real fast, um, and I'm going to share the team perspective, but to share about the leave. We're really blessed that for most of the time um, in these first months of Colin's life, me and Adam were both like home with Colin. So Adam did not have a job that he had like a traditional paternity leave from. Um, He has our real estate business that he was working on plenty. We actually, again, like put up a new rental of our old house like during this time. So he's working on that plenty. And then he had night classes and weekend classes and still does. Um, But in those early days, he actually like Colin being born like aligned with the semester starting back up. So he started all that back up pretty quickly. And it was all like in person classes after having been on zoom for a while. So there were plenty of nights and weekend days where it was just me and Colin for like from three to 8pm or from 8am to 12pm or whatever. Um, And some of those times were harder because that was in Colin's like, we're really learning how to do this parent thing. But again, really grateful that most of the time me and Adam were getting to be at home together taking care of Colin. And now I've started back to work which again, going to do a whole nother episode about this. And then Adam still has a lot of night classes, still has weekend stuff. And also he has clients now that he is counseling um, about five hours or so of that a week with five different clients. So that's something that has changed a bit there. Um, but we're making it work, um, which again, another episode to talk about all that. Now to close us here though, and thank you for being with me this whole episode. I hope you've enjoyed this. I want to share about what my team members have said about this leave. So how it went from a team perspective. So like you've heard through this episode and then through episode 139, we were super prepared as a team for my leave, like really prepared, um, possibly some stuff we had prepared that we didn't really even need, but it was there if we did need it. 
go listen to that episode if you want help with like preparing to leave. I feel really good about all the things we did. I actually don't think I have any like revisions of like, oh, I'd change this and do that um, differently from the planning perspective. Um, I'm really glad that I planned and recorded some podcasts in advance. Um, that took a lot of stress off because I don't think in those early days I would have felt like recording any. Um, like, for example, I actually had it planned that my first episode back from Lee would be recording Colin's birth story. Um, I had that on our calendar as like something I was going to record while maternity leave. I kind of thought, oh, it'd be fun to like take a step back from motherhood stuff and record this episode and get into work that way. And then when it came time to possibly record it, I did not want to talk about it yet. So I held off on that. I recast an old episode and I waited till later to record the birth story. Um, We had a lot of things prepped that we didn't even really need to use. Um, Like I mentioned how we had a document with phone numbers, like emergency phone numbers in case that was needed. It wasn't, but I love being prepared. So I'm glad we had it that way. And yesterday, actually, I asked Abby and Stacy to tell me like, okay, from your perspective, what was good? What could be fixed or what would you change for the future and what advice kind of would you give someone else as they're planning their leave? And this is what they said. So, um, Stacy said she thought was really great. The Google docs were really helpful. And if she had a question about certain things, she wasn't sure if she was referencing those. And then she said the absolute best thing for her, because she's she manages our inbox, that she was able to put to-dos in our project manager for anything she needed help with or need my opinion on and was able to categorize them. So if it was more urgent, she could put it higher than something that was just something that could wait um, for my attention until after maternity leave. And then... The one thing she said she would change, which I totally agree with this, and we actually talked about this in our team meeting yesterday, was that like when I came back from leave, we never really differentiated of like, okay, are we doing the system where everything's being put in the project manager? And she's like categorizing of things for me to look at now or things for me to look at later, all of that, that she wasn't really sure what to do. And I had kind of just been going with it randomly um, based on um, what it kind of felt like that day. So we kind of figured that out of like, okay, what should we do for this? Are we still going to use the project manager of like putting info in like that? Or are we going to just like talk about it on the emails and like assign things that way? So we got all that figured out, but that was her thing that she's like, when I came back, she wasn't really sure what to do there. And then she said as something that worked really well was that she really liked that we quit doing team meetings while I was on leave. But instead, her and Abby were able to kind of like meet as needed by just chatting on Voxer, which guys, Voxer is an awesome tool if you don't use it. Um, great for like quick communication. You talk walkie talkie mode. So they were able to use that as needed um, without involving me. And she says she's glad we didn't have team meetings because they probably wouldn't have really been useful. And then she said, uh, you were so thorough and I never felt lost or alone while you were out. You did an amazing job preparing. So thanks, Stacey. But that's like some feedback there of like what was helpful and maybe kind of a tip I would give to myself for the future and something um, I definitely should have done differently was more like clarity on like how things are going forward when you're back from your leave to your team, like what changes and really like defining that. Okay, what Abby said was the docs were really helpful to have as a reference and going over them before you left was even better. What she means by that is we had a final meeting, just the two of us. I did one with Stacy too, where we went through all the documents, talked through everything of like, what does all this look like right before my leave? So like three weeks before he was actually born. Um, okay. And then she said, I felt so prepared and never felt like I didn't really know what I was supposed to be doing or what the process was for getting in touch with you and keeping you informed. I loved our project management organization for notes and things happening while you were gone. And then she said that she agreed with Stacy that she was a little confused about when I was actually planning um, to come back and when I was ready to take on. And then she says that she wished we would have planned Black Friday a little bit before I left, even just a little bit. Um, so I wouldn't have had as much to do. And then she said, I felt so much guilt for you working then. Um, overall, I think you did an awesome job preparing everything. And I felt like it went really smooth. Um, so yeah, Abby had that same feedback as I did about Black Friday of like, we wish we would have planned it a little more. And she and I have talked about that a few times of like, it would have been nice to have not had to do as much as we did. And then, like she said, she wasn't really sure when I was actually coming back, um, which that's something like, again, thinking about a business owner and your team um, with your leave, like being able to communicate that more clearly. Like for me, I had said like two and a half months, three months ish, um, but it ended up being longer. And I wasn't really great at necessarily defining when the leave was um 
ending and all that because I think in reality I wasn't good at defining it because I wasn't really sure for myself and eventually once Adam and I decided on January 17th was going to be my official start date back I did communicate that to Abby and Stacy. But because I was kind of around a little bit before then, I think that was a bit confusing. But you can kind of hear from them, though, they feel like it went well um, overall and that they felt informed. And um, like I said, from my own feedback, like I did not feel like I was super needed. I didn't feel like there were any like fires to put out whatsoever. Like everything went really smoothly. And I'm grateful that they were able to like take care of so much while I was gone and give me the peace of mind to unplug in the areas I wanted to unplug from. Um, So yeah, that's it. This is a really long episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you want more of this type of content, go listen to the birth story episode. Go listen to episode last week where I talk about like the postpartum journey. So that whole episode is like literally talking about the same span of time as this episode is, but talking about it from like a life perspective, not a business perspective. So I hope you'll listen to that one and enjoy it as well. And then there's a lot of episodes I did during my pregnancy too, if you want to hear some more planning and kind of what all that was like leading up to birth. Um, Yeah. And let me know if you want more episodes about this. Let me know if you'd like to hear um, an episode following up on like what it's been like coming back from maternity leave um, to give you a little real life reference to what's been like. Um, I started recording this episode as soon as Colin went down for his first nap of the day. And then he just woke up about 10 minutes ago and Adam texted me saying Colin's ready to eat. And I said, like, give me 10 more minutes and I'm going to finish this episode and I'm going to go feed Colin. So like it's, you know, working when you can. Um, So I'm about to go do that. And then I'll probably hang out with them for a few minutes, eat a little bit of a snack. And then Adam's going to keep taking care of Colin while I dive into the next work thing um, on my agenda today. So that's a little peek into real life. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed this episode. And I'll be back next time with probably a more business focused episode. But again, I hope you enjoy hearing some of this more lifestyle type stuff. That's what's happening with me in real time right now. Okay. Thanks so much, guys. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast and all the way until the end. I appreciate you being here. And hey, if you enjoyed this episode, then I want to encourage you to check out my website where you'll find tons of resources to help you grow a profitable and sustainable business. Over on ElizabethMcCravey.com, you'll find free workbooks to help you figure out things like the best headline for your sales page. There's a freebie with my favorite journal prompts to start your day with, a guide on website essentials for all you coaches, and so much more. And you'll find my top business tools. Yes, I literally list out all the major ones for you on my website, and there are tons of special discounts and offers for you guys to snag as you try these products and services. You'll also find the main ways to work with me. First, through my Show It website template shop that helps you DIY your way to a strategic website for your business. These website templates are easy to use. They're gorgeously designed and they have all the strategy I'm teaching on this podcast just woven into them. And I have a feeling you'll really love them. You'll also find my course and coaching program for designers, Booked Out Designer. In this program, I teach you everything I did to build an in-demand design business so that you can create a thriving business for yourself as a brand or website designer. So if all that interests you, go to elizabethmccravey.com to access those tools and free downloads. Head to the tools page at elizabethmccravey.com slash tools. And to see the different ways to work with me, simply click over to the ways to work together page. I hope you have so much fun exploring everything over there. And don't forget that you can subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening so that you never miss an episode and leaving a rating and review for the show, um, sharing it with a friend, sharing it on social media are all great ways for you to support this podcast. Thanks so much. And I'll see you again next week.